Uh, so we're back, uh, and we're going to take a look at uh, Polar Lights, aka Round 2's new 350th scale TOS Enterprise. Um, I honestly, I'm actually kind of surprised that they ever even released this thing, because um, I didn't think there was that much of a market for it uh, anymore. Um, and I didn't think that they had the resources to actually develop and release something this size. Um, certainly not for the price that they did. I paid, what did I pay? I paid $159.99 Canadian for it. Um, with the exchange, that'd be about $152 US or so. Uh, I don't know what they retail for in American stores, but it's probably about $149 or $139 or something. Uh, there's two option sets that you can get for it. One that has the... Uh, um, the first and second pilot, uh, the modified parts, so the different uh, Bassard collectors, different end caps for the nacelles, different bridge dome, a um, few other odds and ends, and a different decal set. Um, and then there's the lighting kit, which I believe also includes all the photo etch. Um, and I'll probably get that eventually, but this thing is going to be a long time in the works. I'm not going to get started on this probably for months or even years uh, just because I'm not home for very long a few weeks at most you know this thing is going to be sitting in a box collecting dust until such time as I'm home like long term um, which is you know a long ways from now so we'll, 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 we'll see what happens but uh, for now we'll just take a look at it um, the box front has this very attractive painting of, uh, of the Enterprise uh, at Warp uh, with uh, the power trio, Kirk, Spock, and McCoy uh, in a, again, a very attractive uh, painting of the three of them. Uh, Kirk, you know, glancing off into the distance with uh, McCoy with a stern look and Spock being, how did I get stuck with these two filthy humans? <laughs> um, back of the box has some uh, call-outs about the uh, the design and the size and the information about it. Um, it says that uh, the, it's essentially molded in color, so should you choose not to paint it, you can. Um, but uh, also has a detailed shuttle bay, much like the, uh, uh, the, the Enterprise refit does. Um, also a detailed bridge, so with a clear dome, so you can actually uh, see inside uh, the bridge. <laughs> Other callouts that talk, tells you about the uh, the option sets, uh, the uh, add-on parts, and the uh, lighting parts, and then some bio info about the ship itself. Uh, finished model measures over 32 inches, so just short of three feet. Um, uh, I believe the official length of this Enterprise is just short of a thousand feet, like uh, 960 something feet or something like that. Uh, whereas the refit version is like another 30 feet longer or something. Um, so, understandably, this one will be a couple of inches shorter uh, in scale. Um, the rest of the box uh, side uh, shows the uh, bottom of the ship. Other side shows the top of the ship. Top of the box is uh, Enterprise flying away. Bottom of the box, or bottom side, is uh, Enterprise flying towards. Um, all in the same painting style. Uh, very attractive. Let's crack this sucker open. Like I said, this is my first time opening this thing up, so you're getting a look at the same time as I am. Um, and believe me, that was a big challenge not to uh, tear this thing open. Usually when I buy a big ticket model like this, I open it up in the store. Like, I open it up on the counter as soon as I've thrown down my money. Okay. That is one packed box. So uh, we're going to move over to the desk and uh, try and do this from there. So I wanted to uh, to do this on my desk, but I discovered that my tripod does not go up high enough to get the entire box in frame at one time. So I decided it would just be easier to do it on my bed, which is a fair bit lower. Um, so we're going to start just by uh, taking a look at uh, the first batch of runners and see what we see. Uh, so first up, we've got uh, a set of windows. Uh, these appear to be primarily for the secondary hull. Um, I'm noticing there's a little bit of flash on a couple of parts. Um, nothing serious, though. It looks like it'll just come right off easy. 
Um, also, one is actually a little bit broken. So that's kind of a unfortunate. Um, but uh, because they're interior windows, they'll just glue to the hull inside, and uh, there won't be any any visible uh, damage anywhere on them. Uh, but in addition, uh, so yeah, you've got uh, these up here to be all the secondary hull. I think these are probably for the neck right here. These are for the, as I said, for the secondary hull. Um, I think these are for the neck. These might be, I'm not sure. Uh, and then these are probably for the uh, bridge dome uh, windows. Um, curiously, there's three identical sets of this runner in multiple colors. So you can he see here, these ones are in uh, smoke gray. You might be able to see they're kind of translucent. I don't know, you might be able to see my fingers behind a little bit. Maybe not. Um, but uh, probably you can trim uh, the ones that you want off so that uh, some windows are lit, some are dark. If you are to, uh, uh, if you were lighting the ship, it'd make it easy to, uh, to have some with uh, dark windows and some with lit. Um, and then finally you have uh, the same set again in uh, just opaque white plastic. Next up, so here we got uh, our nacelle pylons. Uh, I believe those clear parts, those long clear parts, I just noticed it. Looks like they probably are, uh, they probably fit right here. Uh, interior windows for the nacelle pylons. And you can see there's channels built right in for wiring, which is a really nice touch. Um, they're also very strongly structurally reinforced, um, which is a problem that I always had with uh, the vintage uh, small scale. TV series Enterprise, and the the, uh, the nacelle pylons on those weren't very sturdy. Um, had a tendency to uh, to droop and break. Um, here we've got uh, uh, some more nacelle parts, um, intercooler buffers or whatever it is they call them. I can't remember all the odds and ends on uh, these sh these ships anymore. But there's also a little mini shuttlecraft, just a little itty bitty one in. Uh, a uh, few different pieces. There's the main fuselage of it in one piece, and then there's uh, these would appear to be the back panel, and then uh, the twin nacelles, which also function as landing skids. Uh, the uh, saucer neck connection with all the uh, drilled out windows. Again, same as with the uh, uh, with the nacelle pylons, fairly well reinforced. Um, uh, channels for that uh, match like a tongue and groove kind of uh, system for the uh, uh, for structural stability, uh, so it shouldn't be any risk of uh, the thing coming apart. Not to mention the neck to fusel or to secondary hull and neck to primary hull connections are very very solid, so it's very unlikely that uh, anything's going to fall apart. Um, uh, next up, these look like interior parts. I would get, gather that this would be the bridge um, with the proper offset uh, uh, turbo lift. I'm not sure if it's going to be... Uh, there's, a, there's some debate over whether or not the bridge faces forward, like if Captain Kirk's chair is set directly on the center line facing forward, or if the whole thing is set at this angle and like this is forward, because this is supposed to match up with a piece of detail on the upper, on the secondary hull, but, or on the primary hull, rather, uh, that is supposed to represent the, uh, the turbo lift shaft, but, whatever. Um, if, when I get around to building it, one way or another, if I insert this part, I will point the captain's chair forward, because having it offset just is silly. Um, additionally, though, this appears to be the shuttle bay, uh, that's probably the roof, two side walls, uh, rear wall, um, not sure what that is, or any of these, uh, long strips. There doesn't appear to be a floor on here for it, so that's probably on another runner. That is a big, that is a big damn secondary hull. Um, I'd call that about 10 inches in length. That's pretty significant. Um, probably about, uh, three and a half, almost four inches in diameter. Uh, very structurally reinforced, very stable from the inside, it looks like. 
Uh, I would say this is probably the socket for the display stand, and then uh, the socket for the, uh, the neck connection, and then the uh, nacelle pylons inside. Um, there's probably additional structural supports that glue inside to, uh, to make it even more, more stable. Um, but then the uh, opening at the back here for the uh, shuttle bay, um, cutouts for windows, everything is very crisply detailed. Uh, I'm actually impressed. I, uh, I was concerned that the, the, the tooling was going to be very soft. Uh, there'd be a lot of uh, like softly molded uh, rounded corners and edges. But uh, here you can see here's the uh, other side of the secondary hull. Basically identical, just uh, mirrored. And again, same with the neck, it's got this tongue and groove kind of notch uh, to connect it. So that actually will work very well for, um, for lighting, because this will fit into a groove so there won't be any, any visible cracks. So it'll be easier to, uh, to have just floodlights on the inside and not have to worry about uh, light bleed at the seams. <coughs> Okay, yeah, we got some more clear parts. Uh, this would appear to be more windows. I, uh, not quite clear, but kind of like frosted, opaque, translucent. Um, so this is probably the bridge dome. This would be the uh, lower sensor dome, uh, or might be the other way around. I'm not sure. Uh, and then some, uh, just some windows uh, here and there. Um, same again here, just uh, more semi-translucent uh, uh, pl clear plastic. I think these are uh, upper windows, uh, like skylight type windows for the uh, the primary hull. Uh, there's a few of them here and there. Um, these are probably uh, for the like the B and C deck windows, uh, kind of on the bulge just below the, uh, uh, the, the bridge dome. Um, and then maybe uh, saucer perimeter windows, I'm not sure. Um, same with the other stuff though, there's uh, identical um, parts in uh, smoked black. Um, looks like now we've got the uh, the Bassard collectors, the domes on the ends of the, uh, the nacelles, done in two parts. Uh, the inner portion which have these uh, the rib designs around them and then the outer domes which are just uh, clear. Um, one actually f fell off on the runner, so I've got it here. And I would get hazard a guess that these are probably the impulse engines, which on the show didn't light up, but uh, I believe in the remastered version of the show they do. Um, there's also some uh, other odds and ends on the end here that I can't quite identify, but one of them actually looks really fragile, so I'm going to be very careful with it. I don't know what any of these are. Um, these look like some kind of weird space teardrop thing. I don't know what the hell those are. I'll have to look at the instructions and figure it out. Uh, got some more very fine windows, small viewports, um, and just some weird, uh, maybe marker lights. Um, I can't really say for sure. Um. I won't, I won't bother to take this out of the bag, this is just the display stand. It's uh, the standard round two dome, um, but uh, nicely reinforced on the inside. Comes with the metal rod, though this one is actually a tube. Um, a very sturdy, heavy gauge tube. So it can no doubt support the, uh, uh, the weight of the model without uh, warping or bending. Um, but also you can uh, run the wires up uh, to power the model. Um, now it doesn't look like there's room on the underside for a battery pack, but uh, it shouldn't be too hard to um, drill a hole and uh, attach a uh, power socket if you were to plug it into a wall, and uh, maybe a switch as well. I was wondering about the shuttle bay floor earlier. I believe that would be it. Uh, there's also the uh, shuttle bay door in both closed and open configuration. Um, I'm guessing these are probably the housings for the Bassard collectors. Um, lots of room for uh, wiring to fit and a small motor for uh, the vanes and fans. Um, and these are probably structural supports for the nacelles. 
Uh, I would guess that uh, once the uh, nacelles are attached to the secondary hull, uh, you would um, insert these and glue them in place, or possibly the other way around. Um, this thing, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Uh, we've got the uh, bridge dome. See, this is what I was talking about. This, uh, If this is, in fact, the turbo lift shaft, uh, it technically should be over here, slightly offset, to line up with the, the turbo shaft position on the set. But, um, for whatever reason, uh, this, the, the turbo shaft door is slightly to the, to the left uh, when facing forward on the bridge. I can never remember if that's, you know, port or starboard. Uh, but the model was never changed to, to reflect that. So a lot of people, to reconcile that, they just assume that the bridge itself is turned, you know, 20 degrees counterclockwise to make everything line up. And now that would be just silly. So... Um, but uh, the bridge dome itself, really nice. It's got kind of a bit of a texture to it. Um, you can see maybe a little bit, there's some shine around the, uh, the perimeter of the dome, and then it's very matte around it. So I don't know if... It uh, uh, looks like maybe it just took a, a light sanding or some brushing uh, at the factory after molding. Um, everything else... Not really sure. These are probably parts of the nacelles. This, I think, is the housing for the uh, deflector dish. And this thing, I don't know, probably the socket for the, uh, uh, for the stand. And uh, here's that same set of uh, runners I showed a few minutes ago, um, just in uh, transparent clear. So yeah, I'm going to say this one's probably the sen the sensor on the bottom of the, the saucer, and then this one is the uh, the clear window on the top of the bridge. <clears throat> uh, this would be the uh, impulse engines uh, at the uh, rear of the saucer section. Nicely detailed. There's got some, uh, some neat checker mark uh, molding in there, sort of like, uh, um, it kind of looks a bit like diamond plate maybe. Um, these would be the uh, vents, I believe, on the insides of the nacelle pylons. Um, more nacelle parts, I think, collars for uh, the Bassard collectors, probably, maybe uh, collars for the end caps. And I believe these are, uh, these house vents on the inside surfaces of the, uh, the nacelles. Um, uh, more nacelle parts, we've got a couple of matching parts here. Uh, more of the same as the last one I just told you about. Uh, these are the rear, the aft end caps uh, with the holes for the, uh, the little ball, half balls that stick out, more collars, and um, I guess maybe some of those uh, some of those clear parts I couldn't identify that look like kind of teardrops probably glue into here, and uh, if you backlight them they probably light up in a weird kind of way that uh, looks kind of trippy. Um, the rest, I think this might be part of uh, the upper rear portion of the saucer section and uh, everything else, I don't know. They, they weren't kidding when they said that uh, you technically didn't need to pa paint this. Uh, this is the entire de deflector dish array. Um, so there's the interior uh, housing, um, the dish itself, the dish mount, and then for some reason there's three of the, uh, the antenna uh, on the on the tip of it. Why that is, I'm not sure. Maybe they give you a couple of spares in case you break one. But um, for whatever reason, there's three of them there. Uh, but it's molding this really attractive copper color. Uh, I really love the color of copper on models. Um, and this, uh, this shade is really quite attractive. Um, doesn't mean that I won't repaint it, though. Nacelles! Nacelles everywhere! They're everywhere! These, these things are huge. Um, I'll just uh, use one as an example. These look like they're probably about 14 inches long. Very, very significant in size. Um, same with uh, uh, what I was talking about, the, uh, the secondary hull. It looks like they're designed to, for very sturdy reinforcement when they're glued together. They'll, uh, they'll hold... Uh, um, they'll hold their position very, very well. But, uh, like I said, about 14 inches long, I would say. 
um, maybe an inch in diameter at the aft and probably an inch and a half at the bow or the, the forward end. Um, got this nice cut to uh, uh, accept the, uh, the, the grills for inside. Um, so I don't know, I don't remember if the Enterprise from the original series had uh, lit grills in the nacelles, but um, if you wanted to, you could. Uh, probably without too much difficulty, and it might look kind of neat. But uh, yeah, these are some big, big nacelles. Let's see how they uh, fit together. Well, yeah, see, the uh, one side has, uh, uh, they have like matching uh, notches for reinforcement, uh, so they're, they'd be very, very sturdy. I'm actually noticing there's a little bit of flash here as well. Um, and most of the large parts that aren't attached to the runners, they have these big uh, pore stubs still attached to them. So those will have to be cleaned off. Because, um, I, I mean, I got to understand why they're there. You know, the, um, the, uh, the runners would just take up too much space. And uh, the people packing them, pulling them off of the uh, assembly line, they don't have time to trim them down flush. Because if they did and they screwed it up, then they've got to scrap the part and then you know shoot a whole new runner so it'd be a big waste so, but as, as a result you end up with these big pore stubs um, but you know even if they were attached to the runner you'd still have these pore stubs anyway so it's no big deal finally now we're getting to the big meat of it anybody feel like playing frisbee I can't even get the whole thing in frame um, I'm gonna admit this really has me upset from the get-go. From the first I heard of them actually uh, releasing this model. Grid lines. Saucer grid lines. No. Bad. No. Incorrect. Do not want. <laughs> um, yes, it's true that the model on the original show did have grid lines on the saucer, but they weren't etched. They were simply drawn on in pencil in a very, very fine way, while this model actually has them etched into the surface. And that's a real bummer to me, because um, it means I'm going to have to fill and sand this entire thing to get rid of them, because I do not want them there. Because I don't like them on this version of the Enterprise. They should not be there. Um, at this scale, they wouldn't even be visible. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of a bummer. But other than that, this is the saucer bottom. It's got a bit of texture to it. I think I've uh, I mentioned on another a couple other parts. It's got a little bit of texture, so I would really have to uh, sand it smooth anyway to uh, to get rid of that texture. Because you know, at this is three fiftieth scale. You know, a tiny little bump, a little bit of sandpaper texture at this scale, measured up three hundred and fifty times, would be you know a half uh, like uh, like a full two to three centimeter deformation in the hull, which is kind of absurd. Um, which again, is part of the reason I don't like the the, uh, the grid lines, because at this scale, they'd be so damn deep. Like, these grid lines, some of them are like a millimeter across. Spread that out to 350 times, that's, uh, that's like 30, uh, 335 centimeters, I think. I can't do math right now, it's late. Um, so these are these would be big lines. That's more than a foot across at this scale. These cut in, etched in lines are more than a foot across, which is kind of silly. But that's the uh, saucer bottom. Actually, before I throw it away. Um, you can see also on inside the bottom, the, uh, the neck connection is very, very sturdy, um, as well as it's got these uh, uh, reinforcement points across the entire surface. So there's no chance of, uh, when you put it together, of the whole thing compressing um, or collapsing. Uh, but there's also these built-in channels, uh, same as there have been all over the place elsewhere, for uh, to run wires. Because um, uh, it's got the uh, molded-in uh, windows around the perimeter, which actually is a nice touch that they were able to, to do this all as, uh, as one part, uh, unlike the uh, Enterprise refit which all the sidewalls were done as separate parts, which getting them to line up was a real pain. Uh, and finally, we have the saucer top. 
um, which has this flashed over opening, uh, which would have to get cut out uh, for the bridge dome. Um, actually, if you weren't going to light it, you might not have to cut it out, but uh, I would anyway. Um, and these are those uh, skylights I mentioned um, in, the, in the bridge, or in the saucer section. There's uh, four of them around the perimeter. Um, and then not much else in the way of windows. So, that's all the plastic that we've got. So, that's enough of that. Let's, uh, we'll take a look at the instructions, but we'll go back into my hobby room and do that there. All right, so we're uh, back in my hobby room. Um, we'll start with the instructions. Uh, they're in the standard polar light style, which is quite similar to the old uh, AMT uh, Ertl style for uh, uh, their sci-fi kits. It's a single sheet, big fold-out. Uh, we've got a uh, black and white photo of the, uh, the painting from the front of the box. Um, bottom section has just some, uh, some details, uh, assembly instructions, etc. Um, starts with uh, the uh, where did it go? There we go. Uh, the B and C deck dome uh, at the top of the uh, the top of the uh, primary hull uh, calls out the uh, where all the windows go, as well as uh, assembly of the bridge. Um, and it does actually give you the option of, uh, from the looks of it, of lining up the turbo lift with the, uh, the little cylinder on the top of the bridge dome or to line up the bridge so that it's facing forward. So they've given you the best of both worlds. They've given you the option of doing it the right way or the stupid way. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can tell which, which camp I fall into. Um, and then there's the upper saucer, just explains where all the windows and uh, other marker lights and everything go. Lower saucer, same deal. Um, gives you the option of... Uh, actually, there's a, one of those clear parts that uh, I couldn't identify. Um, actually appears to be a directional sensor that attaches to the, uh, the big uh, the sensor dome on the bottom of the ship. Um, cause, and it says, actually, very specifically that you should... Uh, leave it off until final assembly because it's very fragile. Um, and then you got uh, your saucer assembly, uh, final assembly, and then uh, uh, the, the neck assembly, and then the nacelles, um, the pylons for the nacelles specifically. It says uh, uh, make sure that all of the, that you basically make sure that you glue it very well because they're heavy and uh, you don't want them to sag. Um, Getting into the secondary hull, it starts with the uh, uh, with the saucer or with the uh, hangar bay. Um, there's not a lot of other interior details. There's no like arboretum or uh, cargo deck like there is in the uh, the refit Enterprise, um, which is kind of a bummer because um, it would have been nice to have some details visible inside the windows. Um, but uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, secondary hull starts with just assembly of uh, all, or attachment of all the windows, um, and it mentions where the uh, the reinforcement channels for the nacelle pylons fit in. Uh, and then secondary hull final assembly is just you know attachment both halves, insertion of the uh, um, of the uh, shuttle bay. Um, if you want to choose which door you want to use, if you want to display it open or closed and then the outer um, deflector dish housing. Uh, last page uh, covers the uh, assembly of the Bassard collectors, the nacelle caps. Uh, actually, not quite last page, never mind. Um, uh, so, that yeah, the nacelle caps. And like I said, all of those, uh, those teardrop-shaped things, the clear parts that I couldn't identify, yeah, they all fit inside the, uh, the Bassard collector. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, when you, um, if you were to use the uh, the lighting kit, or to light it yourself, um, it would. Uh, um, yeah, sorry. If you were to uh, use the lighting kit, or we're going to light it yourself, then um, um, though with the light shining through those would create some interesting effects. Um, 
Uh, then we're getting into assembly of the nacelles themselves. I'm actually running out of time on my camera, so I've got to speed this up. Um, and then, yeah, just basic final assembly of the nacelles. Uh, deflector dish, yeah, fairly simple. So shuttle assembly, fairly simple. And then final assembly of the model itself on uh, the last uh, last step. It actually gives you some indications of if you're going to set it up upside down to to set of how much um, uh, like how much space underneath to keep it balanced. So it says you know under the tip of the saucer one and three quarter inches, um, and then five and one eighths inch under the rear of the secondary hull. So everything balances so that nothing's going to sag and everything glues and sets correctly. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so that's it for the instructions. Uh, and finally, we've got our decal sheet, which I wish I had. So yes, finally we have our decal or decal sheet, whichever pronunciation you prefer. Again, we all know which camp I fall into. You can either pronounce it the right way or the wrong way. Or the stupid way. <laughs> um, and no comment on uh, which one I prefer. The right way or the stupid way. Um, you've got your uh, uh, nacelle uh, markings. You've got uh, your chip registry. You only have the option of doing this as the Enterprise. Um, with a kit this size, they really didn't have the, uh, the option of including the option parts for, you know... The, the, a decal sheet to do... The pilot version, the series version, um, the mirror universe version, you know, to do it as the Yorktown or the whatever else, the two million other uh, const constellation class starships within the, within the line. They just w the decal sheet would have been just staggeringly enormous and um, not feasible. So they've just done it as the Enterprise, and then they've included additional decal sets with. Um, with the other uh, option sets, so I think you can get like the I don't know if there's like the Kitty Hawk or the Constellation, the Constitution, the Yorktown, whatever the other Constellation class, class ships are. But um, yeah, the printing is all really nice. It appears to have been done on an Alps printer or whatever the equivalent is nowadays. I don't think they're making Alps printers anymore, but uh, it does print in white, uh, which is nice. Um, there's uh, interior markings uh, for inside the shuttle bay. Um, you've actually got a couple of different uh, bridge display uh, decals for the uh, for the view screen. Uh, I can't make them all out. It looks like one is a Romulan ship, the other is a Klingon ship. Oh, and the other third one is actually is is Baylock from the episode The Corbomite Maneuver. Um, that's cool. Um, if you don't know who Baylock is, look him up. Um, just Google him. B-A-L-O-K. -B uh, was, I believe, the first episode aired. The Corbomite Maneuver. Uh, it was the first time you really get to see just how big Captain Kirk's big brass balls really are. Because um, he bluffed. And he won. And his entire ship would have been destroyed if he had lost. So that was pretty cool. You know... Big ups to uh, Big Jim Kirk for that one. Um, so that's that's the model. There's uh, not much else to say about it. Um, detail looks all great. They really went all out with all the clear parts. I was very surprised to see that. Um, the fact that they molded it primarily in color. Um, it's this. I, I haven't actually talked about the color. It's sort of the same kind of pale duck egg bluish kind of. Uh, kind of color as um, you see on a lot of Star Trek kits. They're not quite white. They're not quite gray. It's kind of actually, you know, it's it's almost the same color as the uh, the backing sheet for the decals. Um, very very similar to this kind of pale blue, um, which you know whether it's correct or not depends on your perspective. Uh, do you want it to be accurate to the shooting prop or accurate to how it appeared on the show? Because on the show, it was really more gray than blue. But the, sh it, the model was blue because it photographed better. Uh, it was the same thing with the Enterprise-D in TNG. Uh, and, and Voyager as well. They were shot, they were the ships were painted blue, but they appeared more gray because of the, the harsh studio lighting. Um, so it's really up to you whether you want to do it in the 
proper colors or the proper colors. You know, I'm again, I'm not gonna you know throw my hat into which camp uh, I fall into for uh, that particular argument because you know arguing about that stuff just makes everyone dumber. Um, but anyway, I'm running out of. Uh, out of uh, storage space on my camera here, so I'm going to end this now before um, before my camera reaches out and slaps me for uh, for for wasting its time. Um, but uh, I will try to get started on this within the next decade. And uh, if YouTube is still around, if I still have the means of doing videos, I will do a build-up review of it. Um, as for all my other stuff that I've got stashed away, I've got uh, a few new Galactica kits that I haven't shown off, um, a couple of Gundam models that I haven't shown off, I believe there's a, uh, two, three new Galactica kits that are, are just coming out or are going to come out soon. I think the, uh, uh, the original series uh, Viper and the Galactica herself are being done as kits. Uh, this year, as well as the Battlestar Pegasus from the Reimagined series. Um, now, the original series, eh, it had its moments, but I wasn't huge on it. But the Pegasus, I will be all over that. I will be on that like stink on a monkey. Uh, when I find it, I will buy it in a heartbeat. Because um, I love that ship. Um, so sad in the, in the series when they, when they killed it. That was such a bummer. But... Whatever. They kind of had to. I mean, the show's called Battlestar Galactica, not Battlestar Pegasus, so... They... If one ship had to go, it couldn't be the Galactica. But whatever. Again, I'm really rambling. I'm, I'm gonna cut this off now. Um, so, thanks everyone out there for watching. Happy modeling.